And now, balancing chemical equations. What we've all been waiting for. Let's get the fun started. All right, a balanced chemical equation obeys the law of mass con conservation. As I mentioned before, we must have the same number of each type of atom in the products as we started with in the reactants or the mass would not be the same. Okay, we know that the mass needs to remain the same before and after the chemical change occurs. And even the slightest change in mass does not happen. Um, so again, I'll read this again. We must have the same number of each type of atom in the products as in the reactants or the mass would not be the same. So when we're talking about having a balanced chemical equation, we are going to see the same number of nitrogen atoms before as we see after the chemical change occurs. They may be mixed around in different molecules, but if we were to count them up over here, they'd be the same as they end up with over here. Balanced chemical equations. Okay, here is an example of an unbalanced chemical equation. Starting with CH4. This is methane and it often exists or it exists in nature as a gas. When we are writing chemical equations or you see them in your book, you may see um, in parentheses a G, an S, or an L, which is going to tell you if it's a gas, a solid, or a liquid in its natural, like at room temperature. Okay, so we start with methane gas plus oxygen, which is also a gas. Does anyone see anything wrong with what I just did? That is correct. O, oxygen, does not like to be by itself. It's one of those homonuclear diatomics. It likes to be a twinsie. So we have to add a little two down here because there are always two oxygen atoms joined together. So these are our reactants. Then we write in the arrow meaning yield. So we've got CH4 plus O2 yield CO2, which is a gas, carbon dioxide, plus H2O in the gas form, okay? So at room temperature, uh, water is typically a liquid, but in this reaction, it gets heated up and it is so hot that it is released as gas, as water vapor or steam. So here we have a chemical equation, but is it balanced? Let's take a look. Let's see how many carbons we are starting out with and how many carbons we are ending up with, okay? In the methane molecule, there is a big C, there is no subscript, subscript because chemists can't be bothered, remember. When there is no subscript, that means that there is one present, okay? So here we have one carbon on this side and one carbon on our products. So the carbon is balanced. Let's take a look at the hydrogen. Hydrogen has a subscript of four here, meaning there are four hydrogen atoms in this molecule. So we start with four hydrogens. In our products, we end up with <gasps> only two hydrogens. That's where it becomes unbalanced. Let's take a look at the other ones, the other atoms or elements. Oxygen, we begin with two oxygen uh, atoms. Our products show that we end up with two in this molecule and over in the H2O, there is one oxygen. So we started with two and we ended up with three oxygen atoms. That cannot happen. So we need to do something to balance it, okay? Now I'm going to show you an example of a balanced chemical equation. The same chemical equation, but balanced so that our numbers of atoms of one type equal our numbers of atoms of that same type in the products. Uh, we have CH4. This time I'm going to leave off the states of matter. Um, you don't always have to include them unless the problem tells you to include them. And your book, I think, generally does include them, but it's not, uh, it's not mandatory. CH4 plus 2, a big 2 out front of the O2. Okay, we'll talk about what that is in just a minute yields CO2 plus two, 
a big two out front again, H2O. Okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, these numbers that I wrote out front here, I'm going to circle them in purple. This two right here and this two right here, these are called coefficients. Okay? These are called coefficients, and they tell us something very important. They tell us, okay, the number out front, that's what the coefficient is, that big number out front, the number out front is what it is, and tells how many, how many, sorry, I couldn't resist. In my family, we like the movie Grease, and uh, there's this girl who's ordering cotton candy, and the lady working at the cotton candy stand says, how many, so whenever we say how many, we just have to say it like that, please forgive me, tells how many molecules, are present. Oops. Present. There we go. I spelled it correctly. All right, so if we take a look at this balanced chemical, chemical equation, let's see what it is telling us. It's telling us that if we combine one methane molecule with how many oxygen molecules? Well, remember, one oxygen molecule would look like this. I'm just gonna draw it over here. You have an oxygen combined to an oxygen. That's one oxygen molecule, O2, right? There's two O's. But when we add that big two out front, it means we have two oxygen molecules. So we have one OO molecule and we have another OO molecule. Two oxygen molecules. So how many oxygens are actually present? One, two, three, four. Four. Another way that you can figure out that out is you just multiply the coefficient out front times the little subscript, and that will tell you how many atoms of that particular element that you have. So on this side, we have four oxygen atoms now. That's gonna help us have this equation be balanced, okay? So backing up for a moment, if we had one methane molecule, we had two oxygen molecules. We reacted them together in the right, um, I can't think of the word, circumstances, but that's not the right word. Anyway, you react them together, you would yield one carbon dioxide molecule and two H2O molecules. So again, two H2O molecules would look like this. You'd have an H and an O and an H. And that is one water molecule, but you don't just have one, you have two. So you have another H-O-H molecule, okay? So now let's see if we're balanced. We've got one carbon here, we've got one carbon here. We've got four hydrogens in our reactants. We've got two, the coefficient, times two, the subscript, equals four hydrogens in the products. Or if you look at the picture I drew, you can add them up. One, two, three, four hydrogens. So the hydrogens are now balanced. Oxygens, we're starting with four oxygens, like the picture I drew up here. Okay, we're starting with four oxygen atoms. We're ending up with two oxygen atoms in the carbon dioxide and two oxygen atoms in the water molecules because there's only one oxygen in each molecule, but there are two molecules. So the big two out front tells us that there are two two oxygens, okay? Um, so if we were to multiply for the oxygen here, we would multiply the big two coefficient times the little invisible one here, uh, which would be the oxygen subscript. Two times one is two, so it shows us that there are two oxygens. Now, if I did not explain that well enough for you, your book does an excellent job of mapping it all out with really good pictures, so make sure that you are reading that and come to class with any questions you have. We're gonna have some practice balancing equations. In my next video, we'll be showing how to do the balancing on your own and where you can add and how to add coefficients out front.